this one get nice and fat on the end. Like that. And see how that, we're still working with the same shape and mm -hmm. the same design, but we're accenting it a little bit more. Yep, yep. Very cool. Perfect place right here to pull another line out. Now this point needs to come there. So we're gonna pull this point all the way around and just let it dead in. <coughs> Excuse me. It's amazing. What do you think? I think it's fantastic. I think we're heading in the right direction. Aren't we? Shall we wash it off and start over? No, don't you dare. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I really kind of like this. It's got a good balance to it. It's uh, it's looking like a 1950s striped guitar. Uh -huh. And that's what we were shooting for. Yep. I think Dutch should be proud of us. I still want to put a little red right up in here. I like the shape of that right there. Mm. If you could put a, a time frame on it, on average, because you've taught a lot of people, how long does it take somebody to become comfortable with holding the brush? That happens pretty quick, actually. Yeah. Uh, to be efficient enough to do something that you were going to get paid for, I've had people do it as fast as 18 months. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. It depends on how hard you want it. Go after it. Well, everything's relative to how much work you put into yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, the kids that really want it, they they practice almost every day. And uh, striping is one of those things that if you set it down for a week and pick it up, you're a little rusty. Yeah. You know? But if you do it every day. Yeah. I went full time in 1980, and my work got immediately better because instead of doing it on the weekends, I'm out here doing it every day. And so I was getting better. I could just see my work getting better by the day because I'm working more at it. Yeah. You know? And at the end of, uh, it, it took me a while. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get it just right off the bat, especially straight lines. Mm -hmm. Straight lines down the side of a car took me a while. And, uh, but I worked with it. I, I was bound and determined that uh, a little rush wasn't going to whip my butt. And so I stayed with it. Mm -hmm. Straight lines are real hard. If you, this is somewhat easier to learn than doing a 15 foot line on the side of a brand new car. Right. It seems you like, know, yeah, this year's. This is more forgiving. You can correct your mistakes. On a straight line down the side of a car, it's either straight or it's not. Yeah, okay. You can't, you can't hide it. I understand. You know? This looks so much more complicated and so much more demanding than that, but I understand what you're saying. The consistency of that straight line is hard to achieve, right? I like it. Wow. Should we call it finished? Let's call it finished. That's fantastic, yeah. Rick. I like it. Very nice. I think he'll like it. James is going to be thrilled Good. with that. That's the man we need to please. Very cool. Yeah, the customer is always right. It, you want to throw a little line on that? Let's throw a line or two on that. Sure. I'm going to, do you set, want it sitting flat? Set that in the, I'll set this in the thing over there. And not so touch it. Can, it can be drying, yeah. That's working. The colors are working. Very cool. The design's working, I like it. Very cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It looks different than it did a few minutes ago, huh? Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. I can't believe it, that's awesome. We'll do the same two colors right here. Okay. But I'm going to use the, big brush that we started with so we can make the lines a little fatter because it's right. such a big area. Well, it's a big area, and this finish has got a bit of texture this to it. This is a bake oven, correct? It's a powder coat oven. This is Franken-Cooker. Okay, <laughs> Franken-Cooker. All right. So it's two ovens welded together. Yeah, we just, uh, I'll show the people watching what it is. <clears throat> I cut the top out of one oven and the bottom out of another one, and now I can hang parts in and use my Eastwood hot coat system to powder coat pretty much everything but a rear axle. Uh, oh. So it, it, uh, it works. Control arms, 
Control arms, springs. valve covers, springs, hinges, okay. brackets, uh, just It'll whatever. The powder coating, you're only limited to, to the size of your heat source. So that's, this is a way around it, and it's inexpensive. All right. Let's uh, clean this brush out good since we're not going to be using it. Uh, little five zero brush is the ticket on a guitar, though. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell how much better that worked being such a small rug? Absolutely. And this demands it. I mean, the sharp lines on the on the guitar and sharp points on the, on your striping job, and, and it's all in a tight, confined area. We can get a little crazier on this and spread out more because we got a bigger canvas to work with. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to use a double zero brush. Still a King 13, but it's uh, much larger. Has a lot more squirrel hair in it. All striping brushes are made with squirrel hair. There are some synthetic hair brushes out there, but... Uh, do they feel different? Yes, they do. They, they feel different, and they don't hold paint quite as well. Uh, they don't hold as much paint, mm -hmm. and they, they unload kind of at a different rate than a hair brush. A uh, natural hair brush just, for me, seems to work better. Well, there's a couple squirrels in my yard that want to eat the wiring harness on a car that I've got parked there, so I'll volunteer those guys for a let's, striping let's brush. Let's make a brush out of them. <laughs> uh, we're going to start with the red, and we're going to put uh, some nice eighth-inch lines down here so we can see it good. And he says eighth-inch lines, and they are eighth-inch lines, and he's just doing it freehand. Well, approximately an eighth-inch line. Oh, come on. Don't sell yourself short. That looks pretty precise to me. I've got me some dots out here where I, I want this to end up. Mm -hmm. So I cheated a little bit and put a stabilo mark out there so I won't drop one side lower than the other. And do you just freehand those or do you actually use a ruler to get your, I, your I symmetry? set a ruler up there and I'll put this little dot in the same place on both sides. Right. So there's nothing wrong with somebody using a ruler. No. Uh, you can... You can draw the whole design, and some people do. They actually sit, draw the whole thing out with Stabilo and then just follow the lines, or they'll make a pattern, and they'll, they'll use a, a product called Sorrel, and they'll follow their pattern, and that's okay. I mean, it's whatever works for you. Uh, everybody does it a little bit different, and there's no there's no real right and wrong way to do it as long as you're getting the result. Mm -hmm. Well, Kaf, Kaf, or Steve Kafka has, if I'm saying his name, it's Steve, right? Steve Kafka. Yeah, he's correct. got templates that he, he uses and teaches people, and it's a different style, but, but it's an interesting way to look at it. Well, some people learn by drawing it first. They'll draw it in pencil mm -hmm. on paper, and when they get a design they like, they'll transfer it. Yeah, and there's a lot of ways to do it, but they make a, a colored carbon paper, for lack of a better description, yeah. called Sorrel. You can draw it on a piece of paper, tape it up there, put a piece of Sorrel behind it, mm -hmm. and they have a white, yeah. that and then you draw it again, and it transfers the design onto the, what you're striking. Right. Then you pull the, everything off, and you've got lines to follow exact. Yeah. And that way, your design comes out perfect every time. Yeah. Obviously, it takes a long time to design it and draw it and transfer it and all that. When I was at uh, SEMA show this last November, there was a big crowd of people formed in one of the aisles. It was one of the busiest days. It was the Thursday, and there was just wall-to-wall, elbow-to-elbow people. And there was this huge crowd of people that were stopped and cameras with tripods and selfie sticks and all kinds of stuff with people watching, watching what was going on. And I stood there long enough to where I got a glimpse in, and it was this striper named Von Hotrod. Yeah. He was striping a woman's ankle. <laughs> He's, he was, a, he's a left-handed striper, too. Did is you, he really? Did you notice that about him? No, yeah. I, was so, I was actually captivated by the, the young lady that he was striping, so I didn't look at him much, but 
but it was it was fascinating because he was doing traditional hot rod, uh, looked like Dutch style um, striping on this woman's calf, and I it think was a they cool were interested thing. in her more than they were him. Maybe it, it could have been. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But he was making some nice art. It was That's beautiful. Funny. Yeah. He he got some attention though, didn't he? Absolutely. So this is already coming alive to me. And you're using the scale of the oven to tell you how big to make the design, right? Well, I want it to get it to where it doesn't look too wimpy on there. Right. You know, a little bitty design on a great big piece obviously doesn't look right. So yeah, we're trying to, I actually want to spread it out a little more than that. A lot of ways to do it. Well, we're getting ready to do some uh, some videos on powder coating, so your uh, your striping job here is going to become real famous and very popular. That's I'm funny. Sure. <laughs> they'll know your they'll know this is your oven. Well, I will certainly give you credit for it for sure. Thank you. Oh, we're just having fun. We're just doodling. Well, you know, having fun. I mean, it's interesting that you say that. I was nervous holding the brush, but once I hit the brush or the pan <clears throat> panel with the brush. It kind of was fun. So I, I guess it's important for somebody starting out in this to remember that this is supposed to be fun, right? Exactly. I mean, kids are so impatient. They want to practice for a week and then start doing dealership work next week and make money at it. And it, it doesn't, it really doesn't happen. Let me show you one way I could fix this. See how this one is tighter and this one is wider? A little, yeah. All right, so we're going to put an inside we're going to put an inside loop right here to tighten it back up. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put an outside loop right ah, here. Ah, so it balances. There you go. That's better than trying to wash it off and fix it, right? Well, especially on this rough textured paint here. This is just a semi-gloss equipment enamel on that, on that oven. That's it. So it just turned into a, a, a new design opportunity. Well, and it and balanced it back up. It sure did. That's a nice tip, man. That's great. You don't wash it unless you absolutely have to. No, no doubt. I'm, on, I'm saving room for the ivory. Okay. Because obviously we don't want to crowd the second color too much. I gotta pull this point down a little bit. Yeah. If you want to can it over. Am I in the way of everything? Yeah, but you got a Harris pinstriping shirt on, so you're advertising while you're blocking the shot, but. <laughs> yeah, that's working. Yep. Another thing we can do right here, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna fatten this up just a little bit. internet. They call this old school, but we were doing it before it was ever called old school. It was <laughs> it was the latest thing back then. Yeah. I don't know, personally I like the fact that you know timeless design is, is coming back in and people are reaching back for that. They you know? uh, well a lot of people too, if you had a striped vehicle as a child mm -hmm. and when you get older. Yeah. You want the same stripes on it. Yep. And I've done some Volkswagen Beetles for some old folks that had one stripe when they were kids. Mm -hmm. And they, hey, I want my Beetle striped. Okay. And it really works on a Beetle. Oh, absolutely. It still works. Yeah. Any car that's got rounded styling, I think. Well, yeah, Beetles look like they're 1940s vehicles anyway. Yep. What's the oddest vehicle that you've ever striped? Mmm, I've striped some crazy stuff. Uh, done a lot of uh, oh, pulling tractors and stuff like that, but I was working at a dealership one day and one of the salespeople came back and said, grab your stuff, we're going on a field trip. <laughs> I 
I knew something was up. And one of his cohorts didn't think striping was worthwhile, didn't think it was gonna help him sell new pickup trucks, which right. it did. But we went to his garden and striped his tiller. Okay. Without him knowing it. <laughs> and so when the next time he went to his garden, his tiller was sitting there striped. And uh, <laughs> we had more fun with that. I mean, we really had a lot of fun with this guy. But he he admitted later on, you know, it looks looks pretty good on my tiller. Uh huh. But in the beginning, he was pretty much against striping. This is money we're spending, and I can't see where we're going to benefit from it and all that. Well, they started selling so many trucks that uh, after a while, we were striping a bunch of trucks, so it proved that it was working. Now, we'll have to be careful to make sure this doesn't bleed out all over the place. But obviously, I want to put some ivory right down the center. And this is going to change this dramatically. I'm going to try to do it in one stroke where I plant the brush real hard and let it fill up. And as we go down, we're going to let up and put less and less pressure. You remember the less pressure you put, the, the thinner the stroke gets, line. right? Yeah, yeah. So down here, it's going to get really, really thin, like that. Wow, Boy, this. that makes a difference. Pulls it out, doesn't it? It just pops it right out of there. It looks like it's, it's, it's sitting on top of it. Well, it is, but it gives it dimension. That's fantastic. And you can work on one of these designs and get it just as big and elaborate as you want. Uh, I have done some of them where I came back and added some later on, you know, mm -hmm. thought it needed more. It's easier to add than it is to take off. It's a little tricky to take it off after it dries, but yeah, no kidding, especially on a flat surface. But uh, this will be baked on many times, I'm sure. Yep. It won't see a whole lot of sunlight either, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Speaking of sunlight. What's the shelf life on a new pinstriping job? If you're using, uh, uh, first of all, uh, just regular one shot, how long does it last versus putting some, some catalyst in it, some hardener in it? Hardener will make it last longer no matter what. Right. It depends on how it's taken care of. Uh, I have a street rod that I striped in 1980 that mm -hmm. still looks good yeah. because it was taken care of. Right. Um, it just depends. Some people, can manage to mess it up in six months, and others will make it last five years, no right, problem. Right, right. Uh, generally speaking, it's very, very durable, properly taken care of. Understood. You obviously can't buff it. Yeah. And you can't wash your car with a Scotch-Brite pad all the time. Uh-huh. You know? But if it's kept clean and kept waxed, it's going to last. Yep. It's going to last no problem. That's, that's getting some character to it. Yep. I created a, a space accidentally right here for the second color. So we'll take advantage of it. I don't know what it is about fire red and ivory together, but it just works. What do you think? I think it's beautiful. You think we ought to add some more to it, maybe a little? I'm going to let you decide. You're the master. <laughs> well, there's a lot of places we can go with this, but I do want to put something coming out right here. Now, 
this needs to hook together. And for people that are watching, sorry about the silence, but this is fascinating to see, and I don't want to bug him too much while I'm watching him, let him focus a little bit, but uh, I hope it's as mesmerizing for you guys to watch as it is for me. Well, I know it probably, it's, it's boring if somebody's not talking, right? But what we've done is kind of balance the design up with the ivory. Still need to sign it. Sign it. I will be so proud to have your signature on it. Now we need to stripe everything in the shop. <laughs> I see all these doors back here that are just screaming They're for begging a for it. Well, there's a shiny black Camaro over there that we... we uh... yeah, that too, uh. that too. We need to talk about the Camaro. All right. Because I can see it with all sorts of possibilities going on there. <laughs> well, I'll get it finished up and then we'll talk. Tell you what I really need done is I've got a black Harley Davidson F-150 out there that... Uh, it actually needs a paint job, but once uh, once it's painted, I want to be able to pick your brain on what to do with that one. Well, you know, the first thing that would come to mind for me on a black Harley is a set of flames. Yes, sir. Yep, they had a uh, graphic down one version of that Harley F-150 that turned into a pinstripe that turned into a flame job, and I've always thought that a, a hand striping job on that particular detail would be fantastic. Yeah, I've been in a lot of shops that are decorated pretty severely with pinstripe and they just put it all over everything. And in mm -hmm. a shop, the more you put, the cooler it looks. Like there's no such thing as too much striping on your equipment. Yeah, when I was in the, the TV business, the uh, muscle car show, I had a host for a little while, his name was Rick Bacon. and. He, his handle was the arsonist, and he would sign everything with arsonist. And uh, he, by the time he was done there, he'd striped every toolbox and jack stand left and his English mark. wheel. He left his mark, yes, sir. Well, Rick, that is absolutely fantastic. Is that helping? Uh, that's helping big time. Yeah, the color combination just works, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, how do people find out about your classes? Well, I'm only having one more this year, and it's already booked up. Okay. But I, I put it on Facebook. Right. I have a list of the dates, and so when the next classes are, are available, mm -hmm. I will put it on Facebook mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want this to be the last time that you and I do something like this. So sure. I, I, I would love to be able to uh, either to host a workshop here or maybe do another live stream or something like that. Maybe we can do something at a car show. Who knows? As long as we've got an internet connection, we can do this. But um, Rick, what's, your, what's your website? How do people find out about your uh, work? RickHarrisPinstriping.com. RickHarrisPinstriping.com. So remember that if you want to see some outstanding, fantastic work. Got bikes on there, got guitars, uh -huh. uh, a little bit of everything. Yep. A little bit of everything. But I've uh, done a lot of Harleys, mm -hmm. obviously. And here lately, I've been blessed with uh, the guys from Gibson let me do all their stuff. So, yeah, it's yep. been fun. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much. Uh, I love the fact that you want to pass this on to, to, to other people. And, and you're, you're not... We just have to keep it going. We have to keep it going. We have to keep it going. And, and thank you for your contribution to that. Thanks for having me. I Absolutely. Hope, uh, hope we uh, showed everybody a few little tricks here and there. Well, you showed me. <laughs> you actually did very well with it. I'm, well, I'm, I'm pleased that you pick it up so quick because... Uh, that's something if you practice a little bit, I know you could do it. Well, I promise I will practice it. I, I can see it being pretty good therapy, too, because you gotta, you got to be focused it's on relaxing. the panel. It's yeah. very relaxing. It is relaxing. Any type of art, when you really get into it, you get into a zone Yeah. that's a peaceful place. Yes. I don't know how to describe 100%, it. hundred percent, no. You've probably been there. Uh-huh. And in striping, it's the same way. Once you're yeah. comfortable with it, and when you're doing it, Yep. You tune everything else out. Yeah, and you're actually in the moment. And yep. you start striping in it. You're just in your little happy spot and mm -hmm. everything is wonderful.